All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to talk a lot about the state university system in New York. And uh, in order to do that, I'm welcoming uh, my colleague, Ryan Kreps, who's a former admission officer from Brown University. We don't really care about that today. I think that the more important piece about where you are, Ryan, is that you live in New York and have been doing a lot of research and investigation of the state university system. So we're really delighted to have you here today. Awesome. I'm excited to be here and thanks for having me here. Of course. Now, I live out on the West Coast and we spend a lot of time talking about the University of California system. I work a lot with students in the University of California. I know a lot about the UC system. I know very little about the state university system in New York. And so I'm going to sort of let you guide me a little bit and explain to me some of the different components of the state system, some of the features of different campuses, ways to think about it, and also explore a little bit about the admission process, because fundamentally, we are here to help students understand more about the application to college. So let's just start with the basics. How would you describe the SUNY system from a 10,000 foot view for somebody who might be considering one of those campuses or their college applications? Absolutely. Well, SUNY got a late start in terms of the world of state universities. It actually started in 1948 because there are just so many private colleges in, in New in York. Houston. Yeah. Um, and now it's it's grown to, to 64 colleges, and that's inclusive of liberal arts colleges, research universities, uh, specialized in technical colleges, land grant institutions, and of course, community colleges. So there's a SUNY for just about everybody. And one of the interesting facts, as I was learning about the SUNY system, is that there's a SUNY uh, essentially in, in within 15 miles of every New Yorker. Within 93, 93% of New Yorkers have a SUNY within 15 miles of them. Wow. And nearly 100% within, within 30 miles. So everybody has access to different parts of this system. And that's how they like to think about uh, the university system, is that there are different colleges throughout. Um, meeting the needs, the diverse needs of, of, of New Yorkers across the state. Um, and one of the big things that New York made headlines for in, in recent years is the Excelsior Scholarship. So yeah. this scholarship will actually cover tuition for families with adjusted incomes, uh, adjusted gross incomes of 125000 or below. And as I started looking into the details of, of this award, found out that 53% of students that are attending four-year colleges in New York State are not paying tuition. So this is a really accessible system. It's out there as people are thinking about rising tuition costs, the cost of college student debt. People are looking at, at state systems now as, as viable options for getting a college education. Yeah, it's, I love that you're framing that accessibility both in terms of proximity, right? The 15 mile stat, I think is really great. Um, and then also in terms of affordability. I'm struck initially just at the number, the sheer number of institutions. You said 54 in total. Now I think about the California system, you've got only a small handful of UCs, 23 CSUs, some community colleges all over the state. But this number seems much larger for a, for a smaller geographic footprint. Is, is that the intention? Is that what New York was going for when they created the system? Was we really want this to be something that is accessible to people all across the state? Absolutely. And, and New York puts a feather in its cap for being the largest public comprehensive university system. So a lot of people talk about California, but New York is the biggest and it has campuses across the state so that all people have access to those. And the thing that is perhaps interesting for those that are thinking about getting a post-secondary education, but maybe not a four-year college degree, is that New York has both community colleges that have focused on the transfer from two-year to four-year colleges, as well, as well as technical colleges that focus on developing skills that are uh, for students that are focused on a partic particular career path right out of high school. And that's great because I think a lot more families are starting to look at those opportunities. They're, they're seeing pathways for students that require some form of education, but maybe not a two-year degree or a four-year degree, but instead sort of a, a technical education pathway. And so it's great to know that those things are out there. How do students typically engage with that SUNY system when they're making choices about where they might like to go? Do they start with an assumption about what they might like to study? Is the location the more important factor? What tends to be the driving force as students are considering attendance? 
Yeah, I think it's important for students to think about what it is that they want to study and what they want to get out of that post-secondary experience. Uh, but New York has two flagship universities, so a lot of states, they just have one. Uh, one is Stony Brook down in Long Island. The other is SUNY Buffalo out in uh, the western part of the state. And so if you're a student that wants that traditional research university experience, these are universities that you would want to look into. Now, if you're looking for a, a small liberal arts experience but don't want to pay for a private school education, there are smaller schools like SUNY Geneseo, which was, yeah. you know, identified as a public ivy. Uh, so you could get this really world-class education. And if you're in-state, you get it at in-state tuition prices. Um, the other exciting thing on the tuition front is that New York's doing these tuition uh, matches for eight states uh, across the U.S. where they'll match the flagship prices um, at, at those in-state tuition, uh, in-state universities, and those include Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Illinois, and California. So I just think of the students there in New Jersey that their flagships, Rutgers, maybe they don't want to be at a large research university. Now they have access to a place like a SUNY Geneseo at the price of Rutgers and state tuition. So they're really great opportunities for even students outside of, of the SUNYs uh, or outside of New York to, to engage with the SUNYs. SUNY Geneseo, whenever I think of that, I remember uh, my senior year of college at uh, Division Three National Ultimate Frisbee Tournament in Versailles, Ohio, playing against SUNY Geneseo, and I think they were the Snails. I know that their women's team is called the Escargo, which is fantastic. Um, I, I'm, I think that the men's team was was the Snails, if I recall correctly, but that was, that was a while back now. Um, you mentioned flagship universities uh, before I made that aside, uh, both Buffalo and Stony Brook. What, what is the definition of a flagship university? Because I sort of think about that as being unitary, um, but you're saying that they're, they're split in two parts. Does that have something to do with their core offerings? Does it have something to do with their research output? How do we define that? So this is actually a new initiative taken on by, by the governor of New York. Uh, SUNY operated it sort of as all institutions were equal up until a few years ago. And what they've seen is that they really want to elevate these two institutions in terms of bringing in research dollars for the state. Uh, the state has allocated $100 million in, in research funds to both of these institutions. So as a student wanting to go into a field that's, that's dominant in, in research areas, thinking STEM in particular, um, but there, we all know that research goes on in the social sciences and the humanities as well. These would be the institutions that would draw your interest. And the hope through this program is by identifying two universities within the state and by pushing funds to those colleges to focus on research is that these universities as individuals will be bringing in uh, over a billion dollars a year in, in, in federal research grants. Um, mm. It's an exciting goal for the state. And I think part of the reason that New York would be sitting on two flagship universities is the fact that it is such a, a large state in terms of population. I, I like that as an admission counselor because of access, right? If you have two spaces that are welcoming students in, that's more room for incoming students. There are more opportunities to be had in that circumstance. I really like that aspect of it. I wanted to ask you about Binghamton because I think Binghamton is one of those schools that for an out-of-stater is perhaps most notable or historically has been among the most notable. I don't know if that's just because Tony Kornheiser went there. He's a, you know, a sports writer who always talks about being a graduate of SUNY Binghamton. So maybe that's my bias coming through. Um, but that's one that I've historically heard the most about. How does it fit into the SUNY system? Yeah. So traditionally the big four have always been Buffalo, Binghamton, Stony Brook, and Albany. And mm. in this new design of having the two flagships be Buffalo and Stony Brook, there's still an added focus on Binghamton and Albany, but as research centers, not necessarily the flagship universities within the system. So okay. students are still going to be able to get uh, a great education and great research experiences at these colleges, but the focuses will be more on specific programs rather than uh, the university as a whole in terms of research investment. Okay. That makes sense. And I, I just want to give an aside for all of our listeners, our next segment, we're going to be talking with an admission officer from SUNY at Buffalo to talk a little bit about the Honors College there. So we'll do a deeper dive about what, what kind of opportunities are available for students at the Buffalo campus, which I think is uh, very exciting and, and dovetails nicely with your point about the, the flagship universities having some great opportunities. Out-of-state students. Now, a lot of what you're describing, I think is great. And it's the prerogative of New York to 
provide some really great access and opportunities for students who are residents of New York. And I love that. I also love the tuition match that you described. I was listening for Oregon, didn't hear it. That's fine. Okay. So Oregon's not in the mix, but to what extent does SUNY look out of state to help to fill their student population? Are they really dominated by in-state students? I mean, New York's got plenty of residents to fill their student populations, um, but how are they thinking about being an attractive destination for out-of-state applicants and, and what are they doing in order to bring them in or not? Absolutely. So this is part of the shift within the thinking in, in the SUNY system. So over the last decade, the SUNY system has seen a 20% decrease in the number of students enrolling in any of the institutions. And so as part of that push is, yes, while New York has uh, a large population, it's an aging population, there are fewer high school graduates coming out of the state. And so it is looking to other states to recruit and to have more of a national presence with its universities. That's why it's elevating some of those universities to flagship status. It's another reason why they're investing specifically in schools that have specialized programs to draw in students that are looking for those particular pathways. One of those institutions that I visited was SUNY ESF, uh, Environmental Science and Forestry Program. And this program focuses on all things related to environmental science. And so, yes, they attract a lot of students from in-state, but students across our, our country care about environmental issues. And so they have a very diverse population. And as I, I think I mentioned at the start of the podcast, there are students from every state within the system. And so as students are looking for great research opportunities, specialized programs, they're going to find that within the SUNYs. And part of this, the recruitment included that in-state tuition match with a number of states. Um, but this past year in December, they were already 110% up in applications. And those wow. are coming from both in-state and out-of-state. So people are beginning to recognize the value of, of these institutions, whether they're paying the in-state or out-of-state tuition prices, and some of the unique features that, that each of these universities bring. That's fantastic. Um, and it really exciting. I think, you know, I always get excited. I think you do too, about growth of public universities, um, that, that have more access and, and when they get more attention, um, it's always a good thing to see. Most people, when they think about New York, I think, um, not in terms of the education system, but they, they think of the city, right? The focal point is New York city. And it's almost as though the rest of New York is forgotten, but we know upstate is, Phenomenal. Like there, there are so many great things upstate, many great cities, um, many great spaces, many great people. What is the the role of to what extent are students that are graduates of New York City schools considering departures to the rest of the state uh within the SUNY system as they go to college? Is this something that you find that can be challenging for students who've lived in the city for their whole lives to go away to college, you know, in New York, but still to, to not be in that city environment. How do, how do those SUNY sort of square the major difference in terms of the lifestyle between living in a city and living on a campus upstate? Yeah. So many of the campuses upstate have a lot of students from downstate, whether that is the city or Long Island. And I think you get a couple different types of students coming out of the city. One is the students that always want to be in that city environment. and Maybe they're more attracted to a place like a SUNY Buffalo, where they're in a, a city. It's going to feel like a small town to them coming out of New York City, but a city nonetheless. Yeah. And then there are students that have that traditional view of college, of going away to that small college town and having this very eclectic experience before going back to the city and, and living city life. And I, I think one of the draws for, for many of the students outside of the affordability piece is just the reputation of these schools within the SUNY system and the fact that the value of these degrees bring back to a place like New York City. Um, there are communities of alumni throughout New York City. Um, so as students are graduating, heading back home, they can maintain those uh, ties to, to their college community. One of the, the biggest rivalries within this, the small college athletics in, in New York is Ithaca and Cortland. They have a football game that they call Cortica. The Cortica jug is what they compete for. And they actually held that game in, in the Mets stadium. Um, oh, wow. And, and, excuse me, uh, in the Jets stadium. Cool. And the cool. place was packed. And, and it was because so there are so many alums in the city and Long Island. And it was it was a really great way to see all these people coming together, supporting their team and just seeing the the strength of that community in, in the city after graduation. Yeah, of course, New York City is not monolithic and, and many people have many different desires as they go away to college and, and want different kinds of experiences. It's a great reminder of that fact. Uh, Ryan, I want to put yourself back in your high school self's shoes. Uh, you were living in Grinnell 
Iowa, small town, uh, going away to college at Grinnell, Iowa, <laughs> right? Another, another small college experience. But let's say that you were talking to your younger self and you were choosing from among the SUNY campuses, which one most stands out to you? Which one is, is the most exciting opportunity for a young Ryan Krebs? Oh, that's hard. Picking your favorite SUNY is like picking your favorite kid. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, <laughs> but um, I don't think much- anybody has ever <laughs> said that before, by the way, that might be the first time in human existence that someone <laughs> has said that sentence, but yes, continue, continue. Oh. Um, as I was saying, SUNY ESF is such a unique school. And for some reason, I feel myself really drawn to it. But yeah, I didn't study environmental science. I, I studied economics. I really enjoyed that, that small liberal arts experience. I imagine I would have looked at a place like a, a SUNY Geneseo. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing that people forget is that there are contract colleges at a number of private universities within the state. So there are SUNY schools within Cornell. And so a student looking mm-hmm. for a selective school and um, a rigorous academic experience you can actually find that in a couple of the colleges right there at, at Cornell. And so I think that's probably one of the more aspirational um, schools within in the SUNY system. Uh, but having visited a, a number of the schools, I could start to see myself in, in a number of the places. I know you're talking to, to a rep from SUNY Buffalo coming up and seeing the Honors College there on campus and the small school experience while also getting some of the benefits of a big school place is also a pretty appealing uh, prospect for me too. That's great. A good answer, Ryan. I think you you managed not to single one of your children out here and and you were you were spreading the love across the entire SUNY system. And I appreciate I mean I it's really uh, palpable. I think the the sense of excitement that you have at what this system is doing and some of the opportunities that are created by these different campuses. So I appreciate as always your your passion for education, your dedication to to supporting students as they're looking for opportunities in higher ed. And thank you for taking me a novice uh, through the SUNY system. I feel like I know it a little better now. Awesome. Thank you, Ian, and really appreciate the opportunity to talk about all the great things the SUNYs have to offer. Wonderful. We're glad to have you uh, now and anytime. Uh, When we come back, we are going to take all those SUNYs and put a focus right on Buffalo, um, talking about the Honors College at SUNY at Buffalo. So don't go away.